So that's the gel sp So that's the gel spreader. Bleh? That's the <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I bring to you my long-awaited Korean makeup haul. So if you didn't know, I went to Korea a little while ago now and I bought so much makeup. I went with a suitcase that was half empty and by the time I came back it was filled to the brim, busting with makeup. So yeah, this is going to be a big one and I'm not going to talk about every single product because you and I will be here till 2018 so I'll kind of pick out my favorites or the ones that I think are noteworthy and uh, I will be putting a lot of pictures on the screen and a lot of info in the description box so definitely go check that out so yeah let's do this by brand um, I'm gonna start on the more affordable spectrum and then kind of make our way up so let's start with Etude House the aesthetic is really elaborate and girly and bows and hearts which when I see that kind of aesthetic I, it often makes me feel as though the makeup might not be as good in formula, but don't let it fool you because Etude House has some really amazing formulas. So the Play 101 line I think is quite popular, it's a bit of a cult product. They have the Play 101 pencils and these come in so many shades, you can get totally lost in it. And these can be used for lips, as lip liner, uh, they can be used on the eyes, pretty much anything that your heart desires. So these are really smooth and they're lovely. They also have the Play 101 blending pencils which are kind of like an eyeshadow stick, but again, you can use them on the face if you like. They're long wearing, they're easy to blend, really, really beautiful formula. And then again on the Play 101 line, they've got these more like chubby sticks, and these are for the face, so maybe for a bit of cheek color or a bit of lip color or anything you want. I have only two pieces from Peri Pera. Um, this is a brand that you would find at pharmacies and those kind of stores, and apparently their lip products are amazing. So I picked up uh, the Peri's Tint, which is kind of like the Bene Tint, it reminds me of that one, and also an Ink Velvet. Um, didn't go crazy with Peri Pera, but thought I'd get a little something. <laughs> Another brand that's really well priced is Holika Holika. And as you can probably see, I fell in love with the Dual Light Waterproof Eyeliner. This is like that MAC Pearl Glide kind of formula. So it's packed with really interesting nuanced shimmers and they have a little bit of slip so that you can uh, pull them into a wing, but then they set really well. Really, really beautiful formula. And these were something like there was some sort of sale. There's always some sort of sale going on. I think these were about $2 a pop. So super, super affordable. The Wonder Drawing Brow Line in Holika Holika is really awesome as well. They do a thicker kind of triangular nib pencil and they do a very fine Anastasia Brow Wiz esque pencil. And these do come in a gray shade. When I went to Japan a few years ago, I remember that gray brow products were really easy to find. But in Korea, I think it's trendier to have sort of a warm, uh, more honey toned brow. Uh, so whenever I saw a gray pr brow product, I'm really struggling with that word, gray brow product, um, I picked them up. And you've probably seen me use the Holika Holika Wonder Drawing Skinny Eyebrow in a lot of my recent tutorials. <laughs> Another affordable brand is Tony Molly. Uh, they've also got that kind of cute thing going on in the aesthetic. So they have this whole range of Pokemon, Pokemon themed things. And then look at this. The pad is a Pokeball. Oh, I can't, you're so cute. They also have lovely uh, cream blushes in lots of kind of pastel candy shades, really beautiful. Um, also, I picked up these two highlights. One is in sort of a pinky shade and one is in more of a yellow shade. These are shocking. That glowy look that you know we associate with South Korean makeup, I think it's actually built on by the skincare. So lots of layers of humectants and nourishing creams and then a really dewy foundation. They don't really do the highlight like we do in Western makeup. I, my, my advice would be to skip the highlights in South Korea. I think we do better ones um, on this side of the world. But you know, just my opinion. Also a liquid highlighter, meh. This is pretty cool. It's egg pour. Egg pour. I mean, how, how do you store this sort of thing? Um, but essentially, it's a primer. <laughs> it's like a yolk. It's essentially um, a pore smoothing primer. It's very thick. I absolutely love the Tony Molly Auto Eyebrow. And this is in the shade two. It's one of those, again, thicker triangular nib eyebrow pencils. I have had one of these. I purchased it online ages ago and I've been using it for like a year. It is a fabulous, fabulous product. I also like, last one from here, uh, the Perfect Lips Flat Bar. It's essentially like a lip color in a kind of a flat bar shape. 
and you can really use this to carve out the lip line. It's like my perfect uh, my lips but better. I believe we're sort of making our way up um, in budget a little bit here, so moving a little bit more towards mid-end. Clio, so they have these, um, again, eyeshadow sticks and they're beautiful. They're really long lasting, easy to blend, lovely, lovely formula. And then they also have the Gel Espresso uh, waterproof gel eyeliners. Again, it's another one of those kind of really smooth, smudgeable, but then it sets kind of formulas. The best kind of formula of eyeliner, in my opinion, IMO. I also picked up um, a lot of these cushion puffs, cushion foundations, a little puff that comes with them. They don't wash very well. You never really get the product out like you would a beauty blender. So I decided just to buy a bunch of backup so that I can keep things as hygienic as possible. I bought one thing from the same, the same. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. This is the Cover Perfection Tip Concealer. Um, I believe that this is quite a cult product. It's got really good coverage, but it is a little bit more in the drier texture, although I've got to test it a little more. We've got a little bit of Too Cool for School. This brand has a little bit more of like a rustic aesthetic. It reminds me of my high school um, lab classes, more organic almost. And so I picked up the Too Cool for School art class collection. So there's a highlight and a bronzer. The bronzer is nice. It's more of a cooler tone and it's harder in texture. So it's not quite as pigmented, but I think sometimes that can be quite a nice thing because you can build. The Coconut Milky Mist, one of the few mists that I found that wasn't completely loaded with alcohol. I don't know, that just strikes me as a little bit counterintuitive. Why would you buy a hydrating mist that is comprised mostly of alcohol? I don't understand it. Uh, but yeah, Coconut Milky Mist, and if I remember correctly, mm, it smells exactly like coconut and the mist is so fine. I would recommend that. The Egg Mousse Body Oil. I picked up a few things from Misha. Again, we're kind of making our way, I think, to the mid, mid end. Um, this is the Silky Lasting Lip Pencil, which it's really lovely, but it's very slippy. So it doesn't last a terribly long time, but it is very comfortable to wear, um, I will say that. I also picked up two mascaras. Both of these I found to be kind of underwhelming. They're quite natural and separating, but not the kind of dramatic lash that I love. So a little bit more mid-end, uh, Moonshot. The aesthetic of Moonshot is like, have fun, play with color. There's a lot of multi-purpose products, so the sticks that can be used on the lips, the cheek, the eyes, whatever, whatever your heart desires. So the Jelly Pots. I had heard uh, some YouTubers rave about these, and essentially it's like a, a bit of a liquid or, or cream eyeshadow in a, in a jelly consistency. They're super easy to blend, but they do set down really well. And you know, even after the product has set, you can pick up a little bit extra and add some more to the crease and layer different colors. Like they really, really work. But today I'm wearing the shade Emerald Martini on the lid. They're just beautifully reflective. They're just flawless formula. Really, really love those. The Jelly Pots, Karima stamp of approval. This is the Stick Extreme, so one of those sticks that you can, you know, use any way you like. And this is in the shade Budapest, which is a bright, warm pink. One of my favorite colors. I also picked up uh, a cream paint. So this has like a big doe foot applicator. Look at this. Wow. And again, you can use these pretty much in any way you like. And I love the colors. There are a lot of those kind of white based pastel colors. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. So that comes in a lot of shades. And I also picked up a lipstick and this is in the shade Muse Pink, which is a nice kind of pink shade. I also went to a Mimi box store. I believe that it's actually an, also an American online retailer where they sell uh, South Korean makeup products. Uh, they don't ship to Australia, unfortunately, but they do have brick and mortar stores um, around uh, South Korea. So these are the I'm Mimi uh, multi sticks. So we've got, um, you know, blushes and bronzes. You might be catching onto a trend here. A lot of kind of crayon and stick products, really uh, creamy, easy to blend. Also this sort of tint product, very, very popular in South Korea. That sort of, uh, you know, stainy, stainy kind of lip. So I thought, why not? They also do some eyeshadow sticks, which are really lovely. To be honest, all the eyeshadow sticks that um, I bought are really lovely. They're all kind of equally lovely, I would say. So initially I went to Mimi Box because I was trying to track down Pony Effect. Um, if you're not um, familiar with Pony Effect, it's a brand of makeup made by a content creator and her name's Pony. 
uh, ponies makeup, you should check out her tutorials. She does really, really cool stuff. And she has this beautiful range and the aesthetic is really rose gold and navy and I think she did a really good job with this. And the, the actual formulas are really lovely as well. So there's the strobing luminizer. This is actually one that I would say you can skip. Um, every time I've used this, it makes my foundation break up. This eyebrow pencil, which I really like, it's a very fine tip uh, brow pencil and the product is quite hard. So I would say probably best suited to more of a natural brow if you're just wanting something a little bit light. I didn't love these cream eyeshadows. I think I prefer the jelly pots from Moonshot if you're gonna get cream eyeshadows. This um, formula, it's very slippy and easy to blend away. When I was looking at this palette initially, I thought there is just no way that these shades are gonna show up on me because they look really pale in the pan, but they actually do. She also does a, a liquid lipstick kind of product. So this is the Stay Fit Matte Lip Color in the shade Hashtag so good. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and it's actually a really interesting kind of muted mauve. Okay, onto a little bit of VDL. So VDL, it's got quite a, a sleek aesthetic and they have this thing where they create looks and products around Pantone color of the year. So that's pretty cool. And from what I understand, the Lumi Layer Primer is by far their most best-selling product and it's the cult product from VDL. And this is um, Illuminating Primer. And when I first tried this on my hand, I was like, eh, I don't know about that. It has a bit of a, a pink reflect and it seems, you know, a, a little bit glossy, but when you put it on the face, it is beautiful and totally worth the hype. I'm glad that I picked this up despite not being terribly impressed when I swatched it. Uh, I also picked up a cushion foundation. This is the, the moisture one. When it came to cushion foundations, I was very limited by shade. In, in a lot of brands, the darker shade of cushion foundation was about a shade lighter than I am. The Rouge Supreme Fluid Mousses really interesting product. It's meant to be more of a matte lip color, but it's not opaque. It's like, it's like more of a tint. Hmm. I am, I am pleased with my purchase. I also went by many, many uh, an Ari Town. So this is kind of, it's a store uh, and it stocks uh, different brands like Iope, Laneige, uh, Mamond and Aritam also makes their own products, right? Their house products. And this is definitely a cult product. I've heard a lot about it online. It's the Shine Fix Eyes. And it's, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill eyeshadows. It's got this little stopper. I, I noticed when, when I see people wear these online, they really pack it onto the lid almost to be a statement, a statement glitter. But in South Korea, I think it was more often worn as a bit of a, a bitty wash, like a glittery wash. Lashes. I found these two in uh, Aritam. In general, it's, it's not so much of a, a lashy look. Like in Japan, lashes were so big. You couldn't walk, you know, three stores without seeing lashes. Whereas I didn't see so many in South Korea. And the ones that I did see are very delicate uh, with invisible bands. Uh, so I picked up a few just to say I did. So continuing with Ari Tom, as I said that they stock some other brands, including La Neige. La Neige, I always struggle with that one. BB Cushion in Pore Control. So this one is more of a matte formula, if I remember correctly. Uh, I also picked up, and I've used this in a tutorial already, one of the lip bars, a gradient lip in one swipe. It has a darker edge and also a lighter edge. So you can go, the La Neige uh, Lip Sleeping Mask. So I've got apple and I've also got the pink one and I gave um, my friend Michelle a vanilla one. The best lip balm on earth. And I've tried them all. Also from Laneige, I purchased this Eyebrow Cushion Cara two-tone. So it's essentially a cushion product before your eyebrows. And this was the ashier shade. Still sticking in Aritam, they have Iope. Iope? So we've got the air cushion um, and air cushion and... <laughs> Air cushion. The cushions from Iope are, are cult products. Favorites among many, from what I understand. Uh, again, moving a little bit more to the pricier spectrum, we have Espoir. Again, I think quite a, quite a sophisticated aesthetic. It's kind of like in, in the NARS price range. In general, Korean makeup per piece is less expensive than Western makeup per piece. 
right? So when I say pricey spectrum, it, we're talking kind of NARS price point uh, around that perhaps. So Espoir, I love this brand. I think it's totally underrated. So one of my favorite products is the Espoir Bronze Painting Waterproof Eye Pencil. Perfect if you want to, um, again, smudge your product into a wing. Oh, and their shades are just gorgeous and their buttery goodness, I love them. I also adore the Espoir Pro Define Lip Pencil. So this is a bit of a funny one and I think it might be a bit of a Marmite product. Um, so they stock some really bright shades and the formula is quite dry, almost in a bit of a ruby woo kind of way. If you like more of a drier lip liner texture, you might like these. I think Espoir more than anything is known for their, their face products, so their foundations. And they do stock a wider color range than most. So if you're deeper than me, Espoir might be something um, worth, oops, worth checking out. This is the foundation stick. Um, typically I don't love foundation sticks. I think they can be a little bit waxy, uh, but this one feels nice and it was a good color range. Really like Espoir. I think we might be at um, the last makeup brand here and we're definitely moving to the high end spectrum here. It's Suwasu. I do believe that this is uh, a little bit more geared and marketed towards an older age group, but I hear great things about their uh, cushion foundations from all age groups. I have been wearing the Intense Cushion actually and it's got a, a light to medium coverage with a very dewy finish and I also have uh, the Perfecting Cushion. I feel as though I've covered all the brands. I've made checklists and I've, like lists and I've been ticking everything off and I'm sure that I've still forgotten something, but I think, I think we covered all the best bits. Uh, I just want to take a moment maybe to talk about uh, makeup shopping in South Korea generally, um, my experiences in case maybe you are planning a trip. First of all, you are going to have a great time. If you are a makeup addict in South Korea, it's like heaven. There is so much makeup. The, the, there are brands and technologies that you know you haven't really heard of and it really is like a mecca, a mecca for makeup addicts. I'm sure this sounds trivial to some people but if, if makeup is one of your top priorities to check out while in South Korea, maybe stay somewhat close to Myeongdong. There are literally hundreds of brick and mortar makeup stores within a few streets. Like you'll see a Misha and then you'll walk a few doors down and you'll see another Misha and you'll see another Misha, five of the same store within one street. And all of the brands I've spoken about today are in the Myeongdong streets. So definitely go check that out. Um, you can catch a train there. The train system is fabulous. It is mind blowing. Before you go on your trip, if you're planning to go, make a list, do some research on the brands because it is so easy to be overwhelmed. Maybe have a list of uh, your top brands you wanna check out or some cult products that you'd like to purchase. In terms of research, I'm going to list uh, a lot of the channels because I, I did a lot of research on YouTube. I'll list some of some amazing content creators that cover Korean beauty products. I will list them in the description box and definitely go check them out. There's, you know, uh, Edward Avila, there's uh, Beauty Breakdown, Oh God, I, I don't want to forget anyone. Oh, for skincare, Gotham Mister, she's amazing. I'll link them all down below. Thank you to those content creators. I appreciate you. You do amazing work and you really help me out. Do your research, go to Myeongdong, prepare for samples, you'll get overwhelmed. I feel like I've kind of covered it. I've been wanting to go to South Korea f for yonks, for years. The people are so lovely. Uh, the makeup is amazing. The technology is amazing. Uh, really, really exciting stuff. And if you um, are maybe thinking about going to South Korea, I would totes recommend do it. Let me know if you would like to see any of these, any particular products in perhaps a makeup tutorial, you wanna hear a little bit more. Come say hello to me on Instagram, by the way. Uh, as always, I would love to chat to you there. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye. Stop.